Hi there, this is Mahesh here and welcome to the Celestial Quest and I'm back with yet another video. Today I'm going to talk about Zodiac or Bha Chakra in Vedic Astrology and why it is about 18 degrees wide, that is 9 degrees above and 9 degrees below the ecliptic. In videos about Rashis and Nakshatras, I gave a brief introduction to Zodiac and in this video I'm going to talk more about how Zodiac came into existence. I suggest you watch those videos to get the basic understanding about the Zodiac. On the screen, I am showing you ecliptic or upamandra, which is sun's apparent path and ecliptic plane, which is an imaginary plane containing the earth's orbit around the sun. Now let's turn our attention to zodiac. So what is zodiac? Zodiac has historically held great astronomical and astrological significance. The zodiac or what we call bha chakra in Sanskrit is an area of the heavens that extends about 9 degrees on either side of the ecliptic. I'm showing this on the screen now. Zodiac looks like a band or belt around the ecliptic and is a circle of 360 degrees. So why the zodiac is 9 degrees above and 9 degrees below the ecliptic? Let's find out. As we know, moon orbits around the earth and other grahas like Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn orbits around the sun. If you monitor the orbits of these grahas, then you will notice that their orbits are at small angles to the ecliptic plane, which is Earth's orbital plane around the Sun. Orbit of Moon or Chandra is, an, is at an angle of about 5 degrees. I am showing this in the main diagram as well as at the bottom of the diagram as a cross-sectional view to give you a rough idea of the inclination of the orbital planes of these grahas with respect to the ecliptic plane. So inclination of Moon's orbital plane is 5 degrees above and 5 degrees below the ecliptic plane. Rahu and Ketu, which are the intersection points of Moon's orbital plane and ecliptic plane, are also confined to 5 degrees below and above ecliptic. Orbit of Mercury or Buddha is at an angle of about 7 degrees, so inclination of its orbital plane is about 10 degrees on either side of the ecliptic plane. Similarly, the orbit of Venus or Shukra is at an angle of about 3.4 degrees. Mars or Mangal at about 1.85 degrees. Jupiter or Guru at about 1.3 degrees. And Saturn or Shani is about 3.4 degrees. So their trajectory is confirmed to a narrow strip and they all tend to lie near ecliptic plane. The orbits of these planets appear like a flattened planetary disk that fits within the narrow zodiac band of 9 degrees above and 9 degrees below the ecliptic. This is the reason that zodiac is about 9 degrees below and above the ecliptic. By the way, please take a note that the diagram you are seeing and the angles of the orbits of various grahas are not to the scale and are presented here to just convey the point. This zodiac is a narrow but extremely important band of space because as we view the sky from the earth, all the observable planetary activity in our solar system takes place within this narrow celestial band celestial belt. Many groups of stars or constellations also appear on this imaginary belt. Therefore the constellations that lie in this part of the sky have always been of the particular interest to astronomers and astrologers. In the diagram on your screen I have now removed the planets and their orbits and just showing you the Sun, Earth and the Zodiac belt. As you have learned in the Nakshatras in Vedic Astrology video, the zodiac belt is marked by 27 constellations of stars called nakshatras, which are also known as lunar mansions. This is what I am showing you right now. Each constellation covers 13 degrees and 20 minutes and together they make up 360 degrees of the zodiac circle. Each nakshatra is further divided into four quarters or padas as shown on the screen. Each pada is 3 degrees and 20 minutes of the zodiac arc longitudinally. So the whole zodiac consists of 108 padas in total, which covers 360 degrees of the zodiac. We have also seen in the video about Rashis in Vedic Astrology that the same zodiac is also divided longitudinally into 12 equal parts of 30 degrees each, called zodiac signs or Rashis, as shown on the screen. In Vedic Astrology, the starting point of the zodiac, that is the 0 degrees of sign Aries, or Rashi Mesha 
is always fixed with reference to a fixed star and coincides with the starting point of the first constellation of stars or nakshatra called Ashwini. Since nakshatra and rashis are both reckoned from the same point and each pada of the nakshatra covers 3 degrees and 20 minutes of the zodiac arc, each rashi contains total of 9 padas spread across 3 nakshatras. When you add 9 padas of 3 degrees and 20 minutes each together, they add up to 30 degrees, which covers 30 degrees longitudinal arc of one Rashi or zodiac sign. I am showing this on the diagram with padas numbered as 1 to 9 covering one Rashi. So you can see that the Aries or Mesh Rashi covers 4 padas of Ashwini, 4 padas of Bharini and 1 pada of Kritika Nakshatra, thus 9 padas in total. This is a very important concept and we'll visit this in future videos when we talk about divisional charts, especially Navamsha or D9 chart. I hope you now know how the zodiac is formed and the relationship between Rashis and Nakshatras. Thank you for watching. Bye from me for now until I return with another video on another topic in Vedic Astrology. Thank you.